from the first night as the, as the rains came, of course that was five to six inches that we'd had after the snow and the ice. And as the waters came up, we were thinking, you know, how can we help? Uh, the community of Maytown and Garrett and Whalen, you know, it was, I looked over the church and they're underwater. <laughs> you know, you see cars sitting in the water and basements and in their living quarters. And it was just, um, and even a Martin up here, and really devastating. And we're standing here in Doylesville Church and the waters rose all the way to the base of our windows here. Uh, there's a basement below us that it completely flooded, as well as the entire sanctuary. And it remained underwater until the next Saturday. So for almost a week, everything was underwater. Uh, when we came back out, we had assistance from a local fire department, but when we walked in, a pews had been floating. Things had been moving around and uh, everything was pretty much destroyed. We, uh, we, we had to remove all of the pews, carpet, uh, anything that really got wet from the water because it can be contaminated. We've just had such tremendous help coming in and helping. Of course, we are small. There's no way we could have done it all by ourselves. And we had two fire departments that came in. One came in, and that's our local one. They're all volunteer people. Uh, and sprayed down, washed the mud out of the basement and out of the sanctuary. And then the other fire department, which is in another community, came over, brought cleaning supplies, brought water for the volunteers. Flood this time has been interesting in that um, it hit very, very rural areas. And so it wasn't necessarily, at least in our county, um, it's different from each county to county, but in ours it wasn't in our downtown. It wasn't in one direct town. It was in um, the haulers, right? And so it wasn't right beside the road where you saw it, but it was undeniable if you just drove through at any point you could see you could, could just see the family that needed help and, and so we just kind of pop out and say hello and figure out what they needed and um, worked a lot with the hoteliers that, that were checking in guests that had been displaced and figuring out what their needs were so the local hoteliers did amazing about connecting with the families and figuring out what their needs were what their situation was and they would just send a list over and we would track it down and, and then Adam or, or myself or any others that were helping out would just try and get it to them. Um, the, the needs, the, it goes in different phases in different communities depending on what their readiness is for floods. There's been some areas that have been hit that are flooded often and so they know what to expect and then there's others that you heard over and over that it's never gotten this high. People that have lived places for 40 years and so everybody was at different phases whether that be, you know, at one point the first phase was, was cleaning supplies. We needed shovels, we needed cleaning, we need disinfectant um, before you can even think about getting clothing and new things in because you can't you can't put clothes in a place where you don't have a closet <laughs> anymore um, so it's all gone in different phases and where we're at now is people are needing help rebuilding um, it, it hit areas that was impoverished um, for for the most part and so it's really difficult to make the moves on on yes we would agree to to, to strip walls down, to disinfect, to make sure that the place is healthy and sustainable again if you can't afford to put the walls back up. So it's been a, a big issue and an, um, a, a scary thought of what's going to happen going forward. Um, there's a lot more work that happens when the water goes down. And so hands and feet when the water's gone is what I would say the biggest need is and, and will continue to be is just help, help rebuilding these homes and, and help making sure that the flooring is replaced and the wall is replaced and people aren't living in mold. Uh, we were thankful that the laundry truck gave us an opportunity to reach out to these people. So we kept the church doors open for about two and a half weeks and we kept water outside and we kept the, lawn, the buckets of cleaning supplies that we had gotten from the Mountain Mission we kept them on a trailer out front. We had teams from the church that delivered the cleaning buckets plus the personal care items. Our youth group was able to secure funds. Once the storm had, had moved out, we were able to secure funds and working together with Walmart, they matched our funds. We were able to put together a ton of flood buckets uh, the UMCOR flood buckets, be able to distribute those. And they put together 
uh, health kits with uh, soap and shampoo and toothbrush, toothpaste, washcloth, all those things. And we did over a hundred of those and I, I, almost a hundred flood buckets. And we're able to distribute those throughout the community. We used resource centers at the schools to help get it out quicker. Um, and, and it was just an amazing time to be together. And all that happened within one day. And so it was a really good event to just be a part of. And I'm so proud of those kids. Um, they were truly the hands and feet of Jesus in, in our community. We were prepared to do just about anything, you know. Um, but now especially what we do in our stores, we have, the, we have the items already organized. We have everything already ready to go. Um, so we knew that we would be involved um, and wanted to be. But we've been blessed to have people that said, hey, we can get together and we can do this as a community. And it wasn't just my church, it wasn't just another local church, but it was all of us getting together and being Jesus to those that need. The other thing I would say in terms of a need that's not so much physical, but it's, it's spiritual, emotional, is, is sometimes just showing up for people, let them know that their pain matters. And, and a lot of people that were affected don't get told or don't get shown that all the time. Um, so I think that was the big thing is just showing up, letting people know that they were cared about, that they were important, um, that their needs were important, their basic living needs were important and that their pain and what they were going through really mattered and they were seen. So with the laundry truck, it has been a wonderful opportunity to cry with people or hug people or give them a pat on the back and just show love and concern from our church. I said, my goal is, and all of our goals, as we talked about it, was to make these people's life, their home, better than it was even before they got flooded out. And right now we're right in the middle of thinking, how could we redesign this? How could we take the kitchen that was flooded out and, and, and bring it upstairs in a convenient location here? And how could we expand it to do that? And how could we redesign this space to make it better for community outreach? And as we continue to dream and think about that, well, we're, we're quite excited about the opportunity. So lots of times when a disaster happens, the shine rubs off it as far as the media is concerned and all that stuff, and people normally forget. Uh, but here you are, the heart of Jesus. And that's major in the world we're living in now. And so you give me a lot of encouragement. And you better believe that the people that you have helped, they know that too. And so I, I want to thank you, not just on behalf of the United Methodist Church, but on behalf of Jesus Christ, the Lord of all the church.